Hi guys and welcome to this another video in the After the Mass series building on graphs and the excitement that it is. So far I have looked at step line graphs, I have looked at oh line segment graphs and now we're going to deal with non-linear graphs before moving on to some of the more funky stuff. Now the videos actually seem relatively simple but it does get a little bit more complicated as we move on. Now I'm Darren, maths guru, it's good to see you. If you haven't already done so can you sign up to my YouTube channel? Just let me know you're watching. No one watches this stuff, never going to be rich and never going to be famous, but just clicking that like button or subscribe button lets me know that you are watching. And there is mathsguru.com, my website where I upload all of these videos in textbook order with downloadable notes and exam questions and so much more. So head over there, absolutely free. Now, what are our learning objectives for today? Well, by the end of the lesson, hopefully we will have you understanding what a nonlinear graph is and how to interpret a nonlinear graph. And we have built on this type of stuff in a previous lesson. Yes, if you remember, this was a line segment graph where we have basically a number of sections of the graph made up of line segments. The lesson after that was a step line graph and an example of a step line graph, he says drawing two lines for some strange reason, was basically a section of a graph that was basically joined together by lines. So we have open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. And if you haven't watched those videos again, head over to mathsguru.com and you can find them all there. Now, obviously linear in this situation means straight. So I suppose we're looking for examples of nonlinear, meaning not straight. And there we go. Here are some examples of some nonlinear graphs. I was sort of researching online and fairly limited what examples I can use because they have to be free. Can't use um, pay content. And here is very much a graph that is nonlinear. It seems to be wobbling up and down. There's not straight lines anywhere. It is drawn together. And this example here from a previous lesson, it looks linear, um, but uh, actually in this situation, if I was to join all of these points together, I actually have a nice smooth curve, he says, hopefully. Um, and then in my research, it was quite interesting because I looked and then I found out this one. And I don't know what draw my eyes to this, but there we go, latus rectum. I was like, I'm not particularly sure you can write that in mathematics, it's not particularly good. And then, then I thought, well, okay, let's learn a bit of Latin, let's just check what the Latin meant. Well, rectum actually in Latin is uh, the word for straight. There, go figure, huh? Rectum, straight. And latus means wide or broad. So uh, I'm gonna leave that one completely there um, and chuckle to myself a little bit later on. Now, obviously, everything else from now on stays the same as it has done in our very first video on step line graph. Sorry, not step line graph, on line segment graphs, okay? Very much the same. If you are given a graph, the chances are you're either gonna read off some values or you're gonna interpret it in some way. And this is very much what is happening here. So the graph uh, that is currently shown has sort of had a question uh, done to it and it says, you know, the graph represents the speed against time of a particular make of car. And it says, what was the speed of the car after 15 seconds? Now, when I taught this in that previous video, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for the speed after 15 seconds. I find where 15 seconds is on my graph. I draw a dotted line straight up, making sure it stays central. And in this case, luckily, it hits the graph on a line. And when you read it off, it comes to 110, 110 watt kilometers per hour. Okay, so 15 seconds is 110 kilometers per hour. Where did we get the, uh, the units from? Well, from our axes. Axes are really, really important to actually have our units from. And if you don't put the units, you're fairly stuffed. What is also important to know is how much is stood for by each little gap on this graph. So if we notice going across, we go zero to two, two to four. So each of those little squares seems to stand for two and seconds. But going up, it's not two seconds. And this is a way we get to trick you in maths. We use different uh, units. So what do we notice here? We've got one, two, three, four, five squares seem to go between zero and 50, which would suggest then that each of those squares is 10. Now that's useful to know. I tend to write a little thing here in sort of square to say 10. I write a little two there normally just so I don't get tricked by my units as I did in the 2019 exam. Slightly annoying. So obviously then the question goes, after how many seconds did the car reach the following speeds? 30 kilometers per hour, yep. So having found where 30 is, gone across the graph, read it down, and 
2.5. Now again, accuracy here is gonna be a problem. How do we know that was 2.5? Is it accurate? Not specifically. The scale here actually can work against me. So when you draw your own graphs, try and choose a sensible scale, yeah? Is this graph nonlinear? Absolutely, because it's doing this, right? It's curving. So because it's not a straight line, it is nonlinear, but the rest of it all makes perfect sense. How do you plot a nonlinear graph? Well, in many cases, so long as you put the points on in the right places, and then you just make sure that you draw it using some sort of a curving line, that would be awesome. Sadly, a lot of people make silly mistakes with these type of graphs because they put all the little kisses on, for example, and this is me completely making it up, and then join all the kisses with straight lines. And your examiner will see through that in about three and a half seconds and will go, eh, eh no result, no marks, no, nope, because you haven't understood the idea. So in this situation, if we'd been given data and we had been asked to plot the graph, then as I say, there's some important information here that I've tried to put there to help you make sure that you do these graphs properly. Make sure the axes are labeled. Year, makes sense. And we've got population in millions. What else? Make sure the spacing between the numbers is uniform. Yep, we seem to have a gap for every 10 years. For some reason, we've decided to go up in 10 years, or the data has been given to me. Um, don't have to start with zero, all right? We have here started at zero here with population in millions, but we started with 1811 there. So again, we can put our units on to make sure that's clear. Uh, make sure you join all the dots together and don't use straight lines. I just talked about that a moment ago, right? So if we were going to plot this graph, take the data item, put it on, and do whatever we need to do, right? So estimate the population in 1905. If this was a question to estimate our population in 1905, what would we do? Well, 1905 seems to be roughly speaking here. Draw a line up and go across and it would be approximately 30 million people. So in that situation, I'd be writing 30 million. What about 1971? Now it's very interesting because the question in the textbook where I got this from, basically those two data items don't exist. Your data actually finishes at 1961. So what's happened is this part of the line or that part of the graph has been drawn as a straight line. Why? I'll come on to that in, in the next section. But if our data doesn't actually go outside that line, we have to make a good guess. And you've done a lot of this in the sort of uh, data stuff uh, or the, um, yeah, the data stuff for the first section, all right? And do you remember the two words we used? Yep. Well, interpolation and extrapolation. If you remember, when we are given information, if this was our graph again, and that's went up to 1961, oh, he says writing 161, 1961, then any, uh, I think that was 1811, so any year they give me between those two dates, I can go up and read across and I can get an estimate for the population. Why? Because I'm using actual data. As soon as I head, outside of 1961, which is where my data finished, and I'm trying to do 1971 or 1981, for example, that is extrapolation. I'm looking outside the data. Now, obviously, we would hope that the data continues to go up like that. We draw it as a straight line because we don't know, but the chances are it may well be that actually the graph does this, or the graph does that. That's probably not likely. So we don't actually know so our data for 1971 would actually be extrapolation. It's a guess based on a trend. Oh, there we go, now back to trends again. And there we go. As I say, most of this video builds on the stuff that you did in the very first uh, section, you know, line segment graphs, reading off, making sure that you understand the data, and now adding the idea of inter uh, interpolation and extrapolation. Well, I am done uh, for the day. Thank you very much uh, for watching this video. Um, I look forward to seeing you in another one. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and head over to mathsguru.com, where, as I say, the videos are all there in order by textbook with downloadable notes, and the fun never starts. Well, it does over there. Stay safe. I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Bye-bye.